Have you ever questioned the nature of your reality? The Matrix, released in 1999, plunged audiences into a world where reality was a computer simulation, controlled by powerful machines. Our protagonist, Neo, faces a stark choice. Accept the comfortable lie of the Matrix or embrace the harsh truth of reality. This choice, symbolized by the iconic blue pill and red pill, has transcended fiction to become a powerful metaphor in our own lives. The question, what pill would you choose, sparks debate and introspection even today. Do we passively accept the world as it's presented to us, or do we dare to question, to dig deeper, to seek the truth? The Matrix is more than just a science fiction film, it's a philosophical exploration of perception, free will, and the human condition. Are we, like the inhabitants of the Matrix, living in a carefully constructed illusion? The Matrix was an instant cultural phenomenon. Its innovative special effects, thought-provoking storyline, and stylish action sequences captivated audiences worldwide. The iconic bullet time effect, where time seems to slow down, became instantly recognizable and widely imitated. The film's philosophical themes resonated deeply with audiences, sparking widespread debate and discussion. The rise of virtual reality headsets, immersive online games, and social media echo the film's depiction of a world where the boundaries between the real and the virtual become blurred. The Matrix provided a glimpse into a future where technology could create experiences indistinguishable from reality, raising profound questions about identity, perception, and the very nature of existence. The idea of a simulated reality, while popularized by The Matrix, is not new. Philosophers and thinkers have grappled with the nature of reality and illusion for centuries. Plato's allegory of the cave presents a scenario where prisoners mistake shadows for reality, unaware of the true world outside. Similarly, René Descartes' famous dictum, cogito ergo sum, I think therefore I am, stems from his quest for certainty in a world where our senses can be unreliable. The Matrix draws upon these philosophical traditions, updating them for the digital age. Plato's allegory of the cave resonates deeply with the themes explored in The Matrix, both present scenarios where individuals are trapped within a fabricated reality, unaware of the true nature of their existence. In Plato's cave, prisoners mistake flickering shadows on the wall for the real world. Similarly, the inhabitants of The Matrix live in a computer-generated world, their senses fed artificial stimuli that create a convincing illusion of reality. This parallel highlights the enduring power of illusion and the vulnerability of human perception. René Descartes, a 17th century philosopher, embarked on a quest for certainty in a world awash with uncertainty. His method of radical doubt led him to question the validity of all beliefs, including those derived from sensory experience. Descartes' famous declaration, Cogito ergo sum, I think therefore I am, emerged from his search for an unshakable foundation for knowledge. This emphasis on the primacy of the mind aligns with the core premise of the matrix where reality itself is a product of a simulated world projected into the minds of its inhabitants. The matrix takes Descartes' doubt to a technological extreme, envisioning a future where the very fabric of reality is subject to digital manipulation. The concept of a simulated reality has deep roots in philosophical and religious thought. From Plato's cave to the Hindu concept of Maya, the notion that our senses may deceive us has persisted across cultures and centuries. The Matrix updates this timeless theme, substituting the shadows of a fire with the digital projections of a sophisticated computer program. The film reflects our growing anxieties about the power of technology to shape and distort our perceptions of the world. The Matrix serves as a cautionary tale, urging us to question our assumptions about reality and to consider the potential consequences of surrendering our perceptions to technology. In The Matrix, the puppet master behind the simulated reality is the Enigmatic Architect, a sentient computer program that controls every aspect of The Matrix. The architect represents the ultimate expression of technological power, 
capable of manipulating human perception with absolute precision. This figure embodies our deepest fears about the potential of artificial intelligence to surpass and ultimately control human destiny. The architect's existence raises profound questions about free will and determinism. The Matrix challenges us to confront the possibility that we may be nothing more than pawns in a larger game, our thoughts, emotions and actions manipulated by forces beyond our comprehension. Welcome to the Desert of the Real, Morpheus tells Neo as he reveals the desolate truth beyond the Matrix. This line is a direct nod to the work of French philosopher Jean Baudrillard, particularly his book Simulacra and Simulation. Baudrillard argues that in our postmodern condition we are inundated with simulations, copies without originals. The Matrix can be seen as a cinematic embodiment of Baudrillard's ideas, a cautionary tale about the seductive power of simulations and the potential for technology to erode our grasp on reality. The film forces us to confront our own assumptions about the nature of reality and to consider the possibility that the future might not be a binary choice between the real and the simulated, but rather a hybrid world where the two are inextricably intertwined. Baudrillard's concept of the simulacra is crucial to understanding the depth of the matrix. He describes a four-stage process. First, a faithful image of reality. Second, a distorted image, masking reality. Third, an image masking the absence of reality. And finally, a pure simulation, bearing no relation to any reality. The matrix, in all its digital glory, represents the final stage, a self-contained system of signs and symbols that has severed its ties with any external reality. The simulated world is so convincing that even when presented with evidence of its artificiality, many choose to remain plugged in. The film forces us to ask ourselves how much of our own reality is composed of simulacra, of copies without originals. One of Baudrillard's most insightful claims is that the proliferation of simulations leads to the death of the real, replaced by a hyper-reality more real than real. Think of the Maps app on your phone. Spend too much time navigating the digital representation of the world, and you might find yourself lost when confronted with the actual streets and landmarks. The map, in a sense, becomes more real than the territory it represents. The Matrix offers a stark warning about the potential consequences of our growing reliance on technology to mediate our experiences of the world. As the lines between the real and the virtual become increasingly blurred, we risk losing touch with the authentic, the raw, the unfiltered experiences that give our lives meaning and purpose. Baudrillard's vision of a world consumed by simulations might seem like a bleak prophecy, a dystopian nightmare where meaning and authenticity are sacrificed at the altar of technological progress. But is the death of the real necessarily a bad thing? Some argue that the distinction between real and simulated is becoming increasingly irrelevant. Consider the immersive worlds created in video games. While not real in the traditional sense, these virtual realms offer opportunities for creativity, connection, and even self-discovery. Are these experiences any less valid simply because they occur in a simulated environment? The Matrix presents a nuanced exploration of the complex relationship between technology, reality, and human experience. Faced with the all-encompassing nature of the Matrix, the choice to unplug represents a radical act of defiance. It's a rejection of the simulated world and an embrace of the harsh, often painful realities that lie beyond the digital facade. The Matrix suggests that reclaiming authentic experience requires a conscious effort to disconnect from the constant barrage of information, entertainment, and distraction that characterizes modern life. It means cultivating a sense of mindfulness, of being present in the moment, of engaging with the world through our senses rather than through the filter of technology. The Matrix challenges us to unplug from the spectacle, to step outside of the digital echo chamber, and to reconnect with the raw, unfiltered reality that lies just beyond our fingertips.
The Matrix, while set in a dystopian future, reflects anxieties already present in 1999. The internet, then in its relative infancy, was already transforming communication, commerce, and our very understanding of community. Fast forward to today, and the film's prescience is startling. Smartphones, social media, and virtual reality headsets have interwoven technology into the fabric of our lives, blurring the line between the digital and the physical, the real and the simulated. We curate online personas, craft idealized representations of ourselves on social media, and interact with others through a digital veil. This isn't necessarily negative. These tools connect us across continents, offer platforms for expression, and provide access to vast amounts of information. However, this constant immersion in the digital realm raises questions about authenticity, self-perception, and the impact of technology on our understanding of reality. Are we, like those immersed in the matrix, becoming increasingly detached from the physical world, our senses dulled by the constant stimulation of the digital sphere? The film serves as a cautionary tale, urging us to examine how technology shapes our perceptions, influences our behavior, and ultimately defines our experience of reality. Perhaps no technological advancement since the film's release has mirrored the Matrix concept as closely as virtual reality, or VR. Strapping on a headset, one is transported to digitally constructed worlds indistinguishable from reality to the senses. We can climb Mount Everest, explore the depths of the ocean, or walk with dinosaurs all without leaving our living rooms. The lines between the real and the virtual blur, prompting us to question the nature of experience itself. While current VR technology hasn't reached the full sensory immersion of the Matrix, the trajectory is clear. Haptic suits, simulating touch and temperature, are being developed. Olfactory interfaces, recreating smells, are no longer science fiction. As these technologies mature, the line between virtual and real will become increasingly difficult to discern. This raises profound ethical and philosophical questions. If we can experience anything we desire from the mundane to the fantastical, in a perfectly crafted virtual world, what happens to our motivation to engage with the complexities and challenges of the real world? Will we, like the inhabitants of the Matrix who chose to remain plugged in despite knowing the truth, opt for the comfort and control of a simulated existence over the messiness and unpredictability of real life? Another technological frontier intertwined with the themes of The Matrix is artificial intelligence, or AI. The film's agents, sentient programs capable of independent thought and action, were once the stuff of science fiction. Today, AI powers our search engines, recommends our entertainment, and even drives our cars. While still in its early stages, AI is rapidly evolving, prompting debate about its potential impact on society, the job market, and even the very definition of consciousness. The Matrix forces us to ask, at what point does a sufficiently advanced AI cease to be a tool and become an entity deserving of moral consideration? If an AI can learn, adapt, and even experience emotions, can we deny it a sense of self or the right to exist independent of its human creators? The film's agents, despite their antagonistic role, possess a chilling sentience that challenges our preconceived notions of consciousness. As AI research progresses, these questions will only become more pressing. The Matrix serves as a reminder to approach these advancements with both excitement and caution, ensuring that our creations serve humanity, not the other way around. While we may not be plugged into a Matrix-like simulation, or are we, our digital experiences are increasingly curated by algorithms. Social media feeds, news aggregators, and even online dating profiles are filtered through complex algorithms designed to predict and cater to our preferences. This creates a personalized echo chamber, shielding us from opposing viewpoints and reinforcing existing biases. In a sense, we are each living in our own mini-matrix, a digital reality tailored to our perceived desires and beliefs. This can lead to a distorted view of the world, a false sense of consensus, and a disconnect from the diversity of human experience. The Matrix warns against the dangers of such echo chambers, where the absence of dissent stifles critical thinking and limits our understanding of the world's complexities. The film encourages us to break free from these self-imposed limitations, 
to actively seek out diverse perspectives and to engage in critical thinking about the information presented to us. Just as Neo had to choose the red pill and confront the uncomfortable truth, we must be willing to challenge our own biases and engage with the world in all its messy, contradictory glory. The Matrix is not a Luddite manifesto against technology. It's a call to awareness, a reminder to use technology thoughtfully and intentionally, rather than allowing it to dictate our perceptions and experiences. Just as Neo and his allies fought for the freedom to choose their own reality, we must strive to maintain our own autonomy in an increasingly digital world. This involves cultivating a sense of mindfulness, being present in the moment, and engaging with the world through all our senses. It means prioritizing face-to-face -face interactions, connecting with nature, seeking out art and literature that challenge our perspectives, and engaging in activities that bring us joy and fulfillment in the real world. The Matrix reminds us that true freedom lies not in escaping reality but in engaging with it fully, in all its complexities and contradictions. It's in the struggle, the uncertainty, the messy beauty of the real world that we discover who we truly are. The choice, as always, is ours. Embrace the comfort of the simulated or unplug and step into the dazzling, terrifying, exhilarating reality that awaits. Imagine living in a world where experiences are curated, desires fulfilled, and challenges avoided. This is the promise of a simulated reality, but at what cost? It breeds complacency, stifles creativity, and diminishes genuine human connection. Are we limiting our emotional and intellectual growth by surrounding ourselves with curated online personas? The Matrix challenges us to rediscover the value of authentic human experience. One of the most insidious consequences of living in a simulated reality is the erosion of genuine human connection. Our interactions are mediated through screens, our relationships filtered through algorithms. The Matrix shows a world where minds roam a digital playground while bodies lie dormant. Social media connects us but also increases loneliness, anxiety, and depression. True connection requires more than digital proximity. It's in shared laughter and heartfelt conversations that we find meaning. In the digital age, we are constantly bombarded with messages about who we should be and how we should live. Social media platforms encourage us to present an idealized version of ourselves. This creates a disconnect between our online and offline selves. The Matrix explores this tension through Neo, who struggles to reconcile his online persona with his true identity. Neo's journey is a metaphor for our challenges in the digital age. It's easy to lose sight of who we are at our core. Our worth is determined by the choices we make and the impact we have on the world. The challenges posed by the Matrix are not merely hypothetical. They are the realities of our increasingly digitized world, a world where the lines between the real and the virtual, the authentic and the simulated are constantly shifting. But the film is not a counsel of despair, it's a call to action, an invitation to reclaim our agency in a world increasingly shaped by technology. This doesn't mean rejecting technology altogether, it means using it consciously and deliberately, choosing how and when we engage with the digital world. It means prioritizing real-world experiences, cultivating meaningful relationships, and engaging in activities that nurture our minds, bodies, and spirits. The Matrix reminds us that reality, for all its complexities and challenges, is where we discover our true potential. It's in the struggle, the uncertainty, the messy beauty of the real world that we forge our identities, connect with others, and create lives of meaning and purpose. The choice, as always, is ours. Remain tethered to the comforting illusions of the simulated world, or unplug and step into the dazzling, terrifying, exhilarating reality that awaits. The Matrix stands as a potent cultural artifact, its influence extending far beyond entertainment. The film's exploration of reality, illusion, and technology resonates profoundly in our digitized world. It challenges us to examine our relationship with technology and its impact on our understanding of the world. Drawing from a rich philosophical tradition, The Matrix updates age-old questions for the digital age. Its legacy is a series of unsettling yet essential questions that linger long after the credits roll. The iconic choice presented to Neo, the red pill of truth or the blue pill of blissful ignorance, has transcended the film itself, 
becoming a powerful metaphor for our choices. Do we accept the world as it is, or question and challenge it? The red pill demands courage and critical thinking. It's a journey of self-discovery and truth. So, which pill will you choose?